economy. It does give the Singapore economy a boost. Yep. The networking, the ecosystems that come off of that, I fully appreciate that. All right. Let's get on to COVID. Long COVID. Many people have experienced uh, adverse symptoms and effects of COVID months after they have actually gotten over having COVID. Let's talk now to Dr. Chan Yun Jun, who is the medical director of International SOS, about long COVID and what that looks like. Dr. Chan, great to have you with us. Of course, International SOS, a major organization that helps people that are in need of medical attention around the world. Um, are you surprised at, at how many people are having effects of long COVID? Good morning, Glenn and Neil. Thanks for having me here. Um, so yeah, um, I I was doing a calculation this morning. Uh, so World Health Organization announced that COVID-19 to be a pandemic in March 2020. So fast forward, I think we're more than 24 months now. So hmm. people with long COVID. Comic stuff that annoys me. I, I just don't have much interest. I never have. I'm not a petrol head, you know no violins but i grew up one parent family with my mother she didn't drive so i wasn't around cars like you were like most of my friends mm -hmm. were and yeah. i get that so i've never had any interest in cars generally but the idea of paying a small fortune to go Ew. <laughs> that was fun 60 seconds later Ew. wow 200 bucks for this Ew. it just doesn't appeal to me i know it appeals to many and to do it in the heat ugh. But I'm sure you've done it and loved it. I've done it quite a, quite a number of times. But I guess it's like any sport. You know, it's not just the actual, uh, let's say, football match or F1 race. It's the backstories. It's the competition. Yeah, yeah. It's the individual personalities. You know, oh, look, they were drivers I respect. Stuff. I think Lewis Hamilton's backstory is absolutely inspirational. You know, a poor black kid in the UK grew up with no money, dirt poor. Now he's one of the most successful, richest uh, sports people on the planet fantastic story I, I have no issue with that just that yeah it just doesn't really appeal to me if you love it and it's your thing great hey let us know what do you think about the formula one are you glad it's back let us know money fm 89.3 facebook live i'd love to know your thoughts one of the one of the most enjoyable entertaining concerts i ever saw was robbie williams when I he was here you, you, you said that one yeah. Yeah, yeah, you do get good gigs here. I have to say it, that it was it was unbelievable. Um, and and I'll, and I just just really I mentioned this to you before, but the reason why is because it was pouring down rain, and he could not have cared less. He was out slipping and sliding, and he gave he's like that just an amazing performance. Yeah, I, uh, I mean he's a, he is a great at performer. The Whatever you think, I, d I like Robbie Williams, but he can polarize. But as a performer. He gives the lots. He's always been like that. He's 110% old school, Freddie Mercury. They've yeah. paid their money. They're getting it. They're going to get their show. For two hours, they're no, getting the no, show. No. Um, I just had a comment there from, who was it? Aloysius. Maybe when F1 changes to electric cars, I will watch. Yeah, I might be with you on that one, Aloysius. Uh, uh, from a carbon footprint point of view? <laughs> well, they do have, um, actually, they've, they've changed the engines a lot. And, and they, mm. they're running on biofuels now. And they're a lot less... Um, Wasteful, but I, look, I cannot deny what it does for the economy. It does give the Singapore economy a boost. Yep. The networking, the ecosystems that come off of that, I fully appreciate that. All right, let's get on to COVID. Long COVID. Many people have experienced uh, adverse symptoms and effects of COVID months after they have actually gotten over having COVID. Let's talk now to Dr. Chan Yun Jun, who is the medical director of International SOS about long COVID and what that looks like. Dr. Chan, great to have you with us. Of course, International SOS, a major organization that helps people that are in need of medical attention around the world. Um, are you surprised at, at how many people are having effects of long COVID? Good morning, Glenn and Neil. Thanks for having me here. Um, so yeah, um, I, I was doing a calculation this morning. Uh, so World Health Organization announced that COVID-19 to be a pandemic in March 2020. So fast forward, I think we're more than 24 months now. So mm. people with long COVID, um, from all the data uh, collected, analyzed, looked into, it appears it's uh, anything between 10 to 30 percent of people uh, who, who have had COVID uh, may have been having uh, prolonged wow. symptoms, uh, 
which is not going away for more than four, uh, 12 weeks. And, and then that will fit into the potential uh, long COVID as a working diagnosis or, or some of uh, some of us will call it post-COVID symptom. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I was looking at uh, right now, Singapore probably say as of this morning, it's more than 1.69 million confirmed cases, right? If we if we put the percentages uh, into calculation, we're looking at about close to half a million of people who actually had the propensity to develop uh, long COVID. But uh, certainly this is not true in in Singapore because the vaccination rate is high mm. and um, the current surges of cases is due to the BA.4 or BA.5 uh, uh, more dominant uh, sub-variant. So, so mm -hmm. people are not sick sick. Uh, the symptoms are quite manageable. Yeah. yeah. But, but on that point, Dr. Chan, I recently had either BA variant 4 or 5, I mean, I, I don't know for sure, but based upon the symptoms, it seemed to be one of those two. And my colleague down the hall, Rod Montero, had the same variant. And off air this morning, we were comparing symptoms. They were almost identical, fever, achy. But then we both agreed that we had this stubborn, not long term, because it's only been a month, but a slight irritation in the throat that hasn't gone away. Now, I'm not even going to compare that to the seriousness of real long COVID. But the point I am making is that are we being slightly complacent? We think we have the COVID and then it's done. 24 hours, 48 hours, maybe a week, we go back to work. I mean, are we as a nation and people generally being a little bit complacent about the repercussions and long-term effects of COVID? Neil, I, I think, uh, take myself, right? Uh, I got COVID mar late March this year. Um, Work is catching up. Uh, lots of people, uh, you know, getting ready to push through the symptoms, get well faster because it's drumming into our mind. Uh, the Omicron variant that we are facing now, most of us probably would would be suffering from COVID, especially this year due to Omicron variant. We're not mm. so sick. We don't land up in the hospital. Fever looks manageable. Paracetamol, then the uh, body aches go away. So I think we are. Um, we are quite geared up to go out there, uh, live life, work again. Um, and perhaps perhaps sometimes when we are feeling better, we are we're pushing aside, putting aside that the non-resolving symptoms uh, would eventually go away. But I would say let's watch about by four weeks. It should really naturally go away for most people. But if anything lingering beyond the 12-week mark, uh, Perhaps we reassess again. Am I, am I feeling better when I'm climbing the stairs? Am I breathless? And if we are, then perhaps we pop into a, a GP clinic, uh, a mm. health screening center, and then get it checked yeah. up. Yeah. Great advice. Uh, talking to Dr. Chan Yanjun, Medical Director of International SOS. And Dr. Chan, I had COVID in January, uh, Omicron a variant. And since then, I've noticed, uh, I'll just describe it as sort of brain fog a little bit, you know, not quite as, uh, you know, firing on all cylinders as, as I used to. And I, maybe it's just I'm getting old or whatever. I don't know. Um, but I have, I have talked with other people that have had kind of a similar thing. I don't have the throat issues. I don't have the, the pulmonary issues. But I do have a sort of, yeah, just slightly not quite as, you know, with it as I usually am. When And I know International SOS has, in your Risk Outlook 2022, has looked at um, the the productivity issues and, and the kind of the long-term mental health issues as well around long COVID. What are some of the findings or what are some of the things that you are seeing when it comes to maybe some of the less serious symptoms but ones that are lingering? Thanks, Glenn. Glenn, I think... Um so international year uh, SOS, we do a year on year risk outlook, and uh, especially in conjunction to the non-resolving pandemic, we we look into continuous infection uh, mm -hmm. amongst general public within workplaces. A portion of people will will indeed uh, be at risk of getting long COVID. So if we if we are talking about ten to thirty percent of COVID nineteen patient will have a chance of getting long COVID symptoms. It translates into about one one and a half to 4.5% of workforce. So mm. we are looking at this group of uh, individuals 
potentially, for example, the fatigue is not going away. They don't stay as sharp or sometimes right. we call it brain fog. Uh, then the productivity will come down. So absenteeism, absenteeism perhaps would be a people manager or leadership team or even organizational team uh, problem. And at the individual level, because we are not performing as, as best as we should, um, there are ongoing uh, observation that it, there could be a different kind of stigma being mm. labeled uh, onto people suffering from uh, various symptoms of uh, prolonged uh, COVID or long COVID. Yeah. So, yeah, that, so, mm. yeah sorry, Neil. No, I was going to say, Dr. Chan, that is a key point, the mm. stigma. You know, mm. I might, I mean, as an example, say someone might think I have long COVID. I suspect I have long COVID, but A, I don't want to acknowledge it because that might be perceived as a sense of physical or mental weakness. And B, I certainly don't want to tell my employer about it because there could be economic ramifications for myself. Yeah. So how right. do we make that easier from the employer's perspective, from a company's uh, perspective? What can or should they do with regards to long COVID for some of their staff potentially in the workforce? So, Neil, I think there's four things that organization uh, could really look into. We look into the, you know, the human resource or, or these days we call it, uh, you know, people mani management kind of policies. Hmm. Um, do we do we acknowledge that long COVID is not, you know, it's not made up? It can affect a certain portion of people, certain percentages in the workplace. Uh, we we need to make the um, policy to accommodate maybe a more flexible kind of work arrangement. Uh, we we see every um, a lot of organisations are asking people coming back to work. It is good because we need to meet up, we need to have events and etc. But there's a small percentage of people probably can't do that as yet. Uh, the policy needs to let them have a hybrid working uh, arrangement, allow them to seek medical attention if their symptoms are getting more severe. And mm. uh, that's two, two things. Um, another thing I would think, uh, education, education, dissemination of uh, latest info, make people aware uh, you, you can have these symptoms and because of that, you keep, you could be having long COVID. See a doctor if you can't sort it out yourself. And fourth thing, and last but not least, continue to monitor the workplace. If someone should get vaccinated and they have the ability to get the primary doses, the booster doses, why not continue to think about it, right? Yeah. And yeah. if there's a surge of cases again, um, perhaps we look into should we wear a mask indoor, uh, continue to have good hand hygiene and etc. The, the small, right, smaller right things, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Very good advice. Dr. Chan, uh, we just have time for, I think, one more question, and that would be you know, so many people are back on the road, whether for business or for yeah. leisure travel. We've seen the revenge travel happening with, uh, with great gusto these past uh, couple of months, uh, especially in and out of Singapore. What, what is the latest best advice from you on how to protect yourself, how to stay healthy, uh, so that uh, so that you don't get COVID when we're now back in some crowded uh, public spaces. So Glenn, I think a lot of things are now lying with us. Uh, some personal discipline. Uh, I would say one, remain informed, understand you know where you're heading to. Is there a, a surge in COVID nineteen cases? Yeah. Uh, wear masks as recommended indoor and outdoor. Uh, keep the hands clean and uh, get vaccinated, you get lesser uh, severe symptoms, less severe COVID infection, less po possibility of uh, you know, getting, getting hospitalized or even uh, long COVID. And some tips, if we are doing air travel, uh, international SOS for, for some time now, we, we advise the concept of uh, um, you know, sitting in, in the front most possible uh, cabin space, Oh, that's um, interesting. Wow, yeah. I didn't know that. I yeah. always sit at the back. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, then you, yeah. have to pass, you don't have to pass yes. by all those people, right? Yeah. yeah. That makes sense. That makes sense consider, a lot. Yeah. Consider window seat rather than our seat so that people are not brushing, you know, against us. There's some okay. infection control there. Uh, board last because uh, then mm. then you won't, you won't really need to uh, mingle with too many people. And 
uh, disembark first. So, so last <laughs> on first off. So yeah, pay extra for those yeah. premium seats so, huh, up at so, the front of the plane. Like those first class. <laughs> yeah, first class. some some tips, some tips worth uh, worth uh, consideration. Uh, and uh, great idea. Uh, and of course, of wear your mask and wash your hands and have yes. sanitizer and all the all the usual things. Awesome, Dr. Yeah. Chen Yan Jung, Medical Director, International SOS. Thank you so much for being with us today. Great advice, and uh, we look forward to having you on again in the future. Thank you, Glenn. Thank you, Neil. And happy yeah. weekend to all. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Saturday morning on Money FM 89.3. Heavy departure traffic at Woodlands Checkpoint due to tailback from Malaysia. Delays are expected and travelers are advised to check traffic conditions before embarking on their journey. Motorists are reminded to maintain lane discipline and cooperate with officers on site. Please follow ICA Facebook for more updates. <laughs> Saturday mornings from 9 a.m. to 12 noon every Saturday, only on Money FM 89.3. Your blue chip station, Money FM 89.3. Money FM 89.3. News headlines from the Straits Times. Good morning. It's Saturday, July the 30th. I'm Glenn Van Sutton with your Money FM 89.3 news. The Singapore police say that 93 victims lost at least $56 million to business email scams in the first three months of the year. The scams involve sending emails supposedly from the victim's colleagues, business partners, or suppliers, informing them of a change to their company's bank account. Singapore Health Minister Ong Yi Kung says that nurses here will receive an additional payment on top of their salaries in 2022 and 2023. The payments are moved to keep them in the profession. They could see increases of up to 14% on their monthly base salaries. Ong says that more details on the payment package will be announced on Nurses' Day which is on August the 1st. Chinese state media says it will hold live fire military drills in the Taiwan Strait on Saturday on an island 120 kilometers off the Taiwanese coast. This comes as U.S. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi said recently that she will visit Taipei during an Asia visit next week. The U.S. has not confirmed the stopover. Beijing has warned against the trip. In a Thursday phone call, Chinese President Xi Jinping warned U.S. President Joe Biden that, quote, those who play with fire will eventually get burned, unquote. And Hong Kong Chief Executive John Lee is calling on local officials to investigate an accident on Thursday in which a large, heavy video screen fell from the ceiling of the Hong Kong Coliseum during a concert. The popular boy band Mirror was performing when at least one metal cable snapped, sending the screen crashing down onto two performers below. One is reportedly still in hospital with serious neck injuries. And in sport at the Commonwealth Games in Birmingham, Singapore's table tennis players beat England 3-0. Zheng Jian partnered with Zhou Jingyi for their successful win 3-0 in the opening doubles match. In mixed team badminton, Singaporeans Jessica Tan and Andy Quek eased past Mauritius 5-0 on Friday. And back at home in the Singapore Premier League, Alebrex Nigat defeated defending champions Lion City Sailors 4-2 at the Jurong East Stadium on Friday night. That's your Money FM sports update. Those are your Money FM 89.3 Saturday morning headlines. I'm Glenn Van Zutphen. Those were your news headlines from the Straits Times. This is Money FM 89.3, Singapore's most influential radio station. Time check on Money FM 89.3. 1103. Weather. The Met Service says that we'll have thundery showers mainly over northern and eastern parts of Singapore on Saturday afternoon. Sunday, expect late morning and early afternoon showers. Our high this weekend, 33 degrees. That's your Money of M 89.3 weekend weather. Traffic. There's been a vehicle breakdown on the PKE towards the PIE at KJE PIE exit. 
there's been a blackout at Angmore Kill Avenue 6, Angmore Kill Avenue 8 Junction. So be careful in Angmore Kill. And there was a vehicle breakdown earlier on the SLE towards the BKE before Lentor Avenue exit. Avoid lane five. On the causeways, Woodlands, 43 minutes and counting into JB, 15 minutes the other way. Twas, it's gridlocked, 49 minutes into JB, 23 minutes the other way. Drive slowly, drive patiently, and keep it right here on Money FM 89.3. That was your traffic. If you see anything on the roads that we might have missed, you can share it with us via SMS or WhatsApp at 8855-0893. But please send the message through only when you are safely parked. Helping you grow your money on Money FM 89.3. Money FM 89.3 Financial Updates from the Business Times. I'm Chua Tian with some of the market stories that made the headlines this week. The U.S. Federal Reserve has reiterated its commitment to quell red hot prices, saying that it would not flinch in its battle against the most intense breakout of inflation since the 1980s. Now, the comments came on Wednesday after the central bank raised interest rates by 75 basis points in its July meeting. Coupled with earlier actions we saw in March, May and June, the Fed's overnight interest rate now stands at between 2.25% and 2.5%. But while the Federal Reserve is committed to fighting inflation, its Chief Jerome Powell believes some of the impact of the Fed's rate hikes is still building in the economy, and that means the central bank could begin to slow the pace of rate increases depending on how inflation responds in the coming months. Back home, Singapore's core inflation hit 4.4% on-year in June, up from 3.6% on-year in May. This is also the first time that the figure has breached the 4% handle since the global financial crisis. Headline inflation, which includes the volatile accommodation and private transport costs, surged to 6.7% year-on-year in June, higher than the 5.6% we saw in May. The Monetary Authority of Singapore and the Ministry of Trade and Industry noted that June's higher core inflation reflected stronger price increases across services, food, retail, electricity and gas, as well as other goods. Commenting on the data, MAS and MTI say inflationary pressures will remain elevated in the months ahead and that upside risks such as fresh shocks to global commodity prices and domestic wage pressures remain. Let's also take a look at how Singapore shares ended the week they closed lower on Friday due to heightened recessionary fears across the region. And that's despite Wall Street ending higher after the U.S. entered into a technical recession. The Straits Times Index dipped 0.3% to 3,211 points. Ground handler and in-flight caterer sets rose 1.3% today, coattailing on the tailwinds its airline customers, Singapore Airlines, enjoyed after the carrier's return to profitability. And that's your finance rep here on Money of M 89.3. I'm Chua Tian Tian. Those were your financial updates from the Business Times. This is Money FM 89.3, Singapore's most influential radio station. Saturday morning, only on Money FM 89.3. Good morning and welcome to our third hour of Saturday mornings on Money FM 89.3. Glenn Van Zutphen and Neil Humphreys with you. And oh, what a morning it's been, my friend. It's been a delightful morning. And I just want to give a shout out to our regulars and everybody else, of yeah. course. But on Facebook Live, they're still with us. The comments are still coming in. I want to thank Acres for posting all of the links to mm. their upcoming events. But we had so many comments coming in which completely underscores Dr. Chan's point. Uh, Nor Salina Hanif said she had long-term effects of COVID. I hope you've recovered from that. Yeah. Pin Pin Chia asks, if I test positive with a very faint li line but no symptoms, does it mean I have COVID? Yes, it does, Pin Pin Chia, I'm yeah, afraid. So yeah. you do have to technically isolate if that's the case. I hope you recover soon. LL Tan, what percentage of population has been affected for her, needs to be infected for herd immunity? Uh, I wouldn't know that. I mean, we're not there yet. I know I that. It was, I thought it was like something like 70. Uh, I'm just remembering back. Years, and on that point, right? on that point, 70% maybe. Does something? it even matter? Because mm -hmm. with reinfection rates, I caught it in the UK. I know people in the UK who have caught it twice, three times. There's a story coming out, plug here for ST Life tomorrow, 
saying, uh, so read ST Life tomorrow, I have had COVID three times, you know, that kind of thing. Um, Dr. Chan, how long do you think long COVID can last as I have a couple of friends with mm. similar symptoms as Neil? Aloysius, I must point out, I do not have what appear to be the serious, um, you know, conditions and uh, symptoms of long COVID. I mean, long COVID, some poor souls can struggle to get out of bed you know, weeks and months after COVID. Right. I just have a slight sore throat. Yeah. Um, lots of comments there. Now, Aloysius has got a good point here. He mm. says, suggestion when you're traveling on the airplane, wear the N95 mask yeah. and not the cheap surgical mask or the, you know, you're at home, yeah. whatever mask. That's a great, that's a great uh, recommendation, Aloysius. A and good comments. A uh, good point I thought Dr. Chan made, which I never thought of, you know, sit towards the front of the plane because i always sit near the back out of oh, habit i just the thing i've always enjoyed getting the very last three seats if okay. it's, it's the three of us in economy at the very back i don't i'm a, i'm not first world problems i can't stand people behind me you know the, oh, the kicking of the chairs and yeah, the, yeah, yeah. so i always get the last three yeah. uh just because it gives you a, a semblance of greater privacy you okay. know and there's there's no one behind you yeah. so you've either got the the guys behind you, the staff, I often get up and have a chat with them. And, you know, I just find that better, which is the complete opposite of what Dr. Chan is saying. Yeah. Go you know, to the front. I, I tend I tend to get the furthest forward seat that I can get. And I always get on the plane toward last because I just don't like I don't like standing in the queue on the jetway. Hmm. You know, I don't like like I don't like all that. I'll, I'll just wait until everybody else gets on. But if I'll it's I'm, on. I'm assuming this is economy. But if that's economy, they now board in rows don't they so i tend to get on the plane almost first because it's the back rows first and yep. then the next row so but then you are sit it there's pluses and minuses you're sitting on the plane longer and yeah i get that it's funny because my wife wants to get on right away and get settled in same my wife is and, the same and 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 i have you know i have done that when we've gotten on early and you actually if it's a long flight start watching a movie right absolutely you know just get in there and get going and you can you can get you know 40 minutes into a movie before that you've even completely left completely what i do on <laughs> right? singapore airlines i'm on and then they're fiddling i'm in my world i'm yeah, watching yeah, something yeah, yeah. they can do what they like yeah, that's true I, I i have done that but generally speaking um uh you know uh, i i would tend to get on later but i, I do like to sit near the front is so, that the old CNN business class well, coming out? No, yeah, CNN, no, but no, nobody <laughs> really? flies business classes. No, I certainly never did. Oh, yeah, no, no, no. You, yeah, you have. I think you have a perception of. No, I just assumed life in the world that I just uh, assumed with the CNN guys. I'm sure Richard the, Quest flies business class, but I, I certainly never did. But all right, fair enough. I've never flown business class, but uh, one time I always tell this story. One time in my life, I flew business class because there was a flight change. Do you know where I flew business class to and from? KL. To Johor. <laughs> <laughs> and it was, I'd, I'd been up there, the whole thing. I'd been interviewing the Manchester United squad 2001. Yeah. So yeah. I'm out, you know, I'm in, in exclusives <laughs> with David Beckham and Ryan Giggs. And I'm in that world of, for five minutes. Yes. I'm in that. We're flying you Rarified back. Rarified air. Right. And I was at the Palace of the Golden Horses in KL. And I'm, I'm flying back. <laughs> You know, we've got you on, we've got you on business class, first time ever. What's the airline in Malaysia owned by Fernandez? Air Asia. Air Asia. Yeah. Air Asia, right? So I'm seated. I'm in, and it's five o'clock in the morning. So I'm exhausted. KL. I get on the plane. Nice big seat. I close my eyes. We're in the air. Twenty minutes. I wake up. We've landed. I have no memory, <laughs> no memory of this twenty minute business class flight. I have to say, you. Uh, on occasion, I've, I've used miles or whatever to upgrade on the trans yeah, good for you. Why not? and all that. You've got to do it sometime when you, you know, when you go back to Europe. I want to. It's amazing. I, I mean, to. honestly, it is amazing. And you know the thing? You know the thing? My mother has been on business class twice on my dollar because she's, it's, it's luck, isn't it? If you're flying alone, you've got more chance of being upgraded if, yeah, the, yeah. if the flight is full. Yeah. It's happened.